Welcome or welcome back to Twisted Minds. My name's James, and today we're going to be talking about Nikolai Julagamiev, or for better context, the man who is known as Kolya the Maneater. This case is He's a, a man-eater, straight out man of the type wild. So please buckle up because you're in for one hell of a story. On this channel, we'll explore slaughter cases of all sorts, but for this guy, we're gonna hold back on the suspenseful evidence analysis and mystery behind each case because we'd probably be here all day. That's right, Nikolai's a serial killer. Oh, and if you thought the whole serial killer side of things is at all even close to the craziest part of this story, then you're in for a ride. Born and raised in Yuzgaznach, Kazakhstan, in 1952, Nikolai was the fourth of five children. The strangest part, his childhood was what most would consider normal by all accounts. No crazy divorce, no childhood abuse or childhood traumas, just your standard upbringing. Given, I'm sure he had his lows from time to time, but he never experienced or behaved in ways of which most serial killers did in their younger days. As for his adolescence, he spent his days at railway school and even served in the military service in the Chemical Defense Corps at Samkard and Otar. After this, he attempted to become a driver and then went on to apply for universities. However, failed at achieving both of these goals. But don't let these shortcomings from his young adulthood affect the way you view young Nikolai, as he was a man valued for always being well-dressed and clean-shaven. And let's just say he had little to no trouble when it came to women. Nikolai was a hard-working man too. Having worked jobs such as being an electrician, a sailor, a forwarder, a bulldozer operator, I mean, the list just goes on. While on those jobs, he traveled across the country, only returning to his hometown in 1977, where he became a firefighter at 25 years old. It was at this point his life was slowly falling into place. Once he started seeing more money, he began hosting parties from time to time with all his friends. Now, I know what you're thinking. How does all of this life experience, career, and social success lead to anything remotely out of the norm, let alone the beginnings of a serial killer? Well, let's just say that Nikolai was enjoying himself a lot that year and contracted both syphilis and trichomonasis. He what? blamed women entirely the hell for this, is the last and one? thus his fierce resentment for women began. What is trichomonasis? Nikolai whatever, found his first victim in January of 1979. We don't know the exact date of the yeah, event well, because well. when Nikolai was captured, he couldn't remember the date himself. As you all know, after the whole STD Bugs incident, his date? anger what toward women grew fuck? to new heights. By all means, he felt as though women were lower class citizens that had no place in the modern world. This led him to hunt down his very first victim and take her life in such a savage way that even Jeffrey Dahmer would want to vomit. Many years after being captured, Nikolai opened up to the police and told his story of his first victim. He said that he had been traveling down a rural path somewhere in Yuzgaznach. As he was moving along the path, he noticed a young woman in the distance. He remembers being very attracted to the woman, but rather than continuing strolling like any normal person, he decided to do the unthinkable. Nikolai charged toward her from behind. He wasn't even trying to be discreet. By all means, he didn't care if she saw him coming because he knew he was gonna get the job done. As he ran up behind her, she spun around after hearing his pouncing footsteps. Nikolai recalls that as he drew closer to her, his heart began to pound with excitement. The woman did her best to run away, but Nikolai had gained too much ground on her for her to even stand a chance. Within a few short moments, he had her in his grasp and he began to wrap his arm around her neck so she could neither breathe nor scream. Nikolai didn't waste any time. While this was a rural area, there was still a good chance that someone may pass by and see him. So without hesitation, he used his tools on her throat and let her bleed out. Though, this is where things get twisted. Nikolai didn't want to waste her innocent blood, so he began to drink it. Yeah, you heard me right. 
Just like a vampire from a horror movie, Nikolai began to drink the young woman's blood. As he was doing so, he heard a bus approaching from a distance. Running about to avoid STDs, getting caught, he dragged the woman's body blood. down low onto the ground and crunched down until the bus passed by. To his luck, he was left unnoticed, and his activities from that night were left a mystery to the rest of the city. Oh, and I'm not even halfway through what he did that night. After Nikolai saw that the coast was clear, he began to carry out some of the most horrific acts you could imagine with a young woman's body. I'll leave most of it up to your imagination as it's uh, not exactly YouTube friendly. Let's just say that he treated her body as if it was a large steak. He of course needed to see if it was cooked to his liking. And he began tearing up the insides of the uh, steak. He did so with complete disregard for the woman's dignity and literally separate her apart limb from limb, as though she were nothing more than a piece of butcher meat. And what's a piece of butcher meat without a little barbecue? He began to load large portions of her body into his backpack. He then carried them home and began to detach the fat from the muscle and meat. He turned her fat into oil after cooking it for quite some time and even went as far as pickling certain parts of her body. To spice things up a bit and add some variety to his diet, he put other portions of the woman's body through a grinder and made meatballs out of them. He kept all of the meat for himself and never shared it with anyone, and thankfully so. He says that he was able to eat for an entire month using nothing but the body of this innocent young woman. In his own words, Nikolai said, it was tough and I had to cook it for a long time in its own fat. The first time I ate human flesh, I had to force myself, but then I got used to it. It would be just a short time later that the remnants of the woman's body were found in the woods on January 25th, 1979. Police opened an investigation into the matter, but since Nikolai had no connections with the woman, the case ran cold for many years. And a whole lot went down in between those years. It wouldn't take long for Nikolai to continue his spree and claim the lives of several more women. Many reports say that Nikolai would claim the majority of his victims during the twilight hours at a local park. As with most cases of serial killers, we don't know for sure how many lives he claimed. However, it is known that Nikolai took the lives of more than five women between January and August of 1979. Though some sources even go as far as claiming Nikolai could have killed as many as 100 people. As for the other five confirmed victims, he managed to get away with each and every one of these cases. He even cannibalized every one of these victims, cutting them apart in a very similar manner to his first victim. However, Nikolai would soon make a mistake that almost marked the end of his spree. Almost marked. On August 21st, Nikolai was working at the fire station when he accidentally shot one of his co-workers while he was severely intoxicated. We don't know how this took place exactly, but it seems like the two were probably goofing around and being reckless when the gun went off. Whatever took place that day, Nikolai was arrested and taken to the police station. Police could immediately tell that something wasn't right with this guy. So, he was transferred to a nearby mental health facility known as Serb Sky Center. He was evaluated by several doctors at the clinic and he would soon be diagnosed with schizophrenia, a common mental disorder among serial killers. Nikolai would lay low and remain in this facility for about a year. In cell. You may rightfully Definition. have assumed that involuntary while involuntary celibate, here, frustrated would... from inexperience with women. Video describes man as being very good with women so much that he contacted STD. Chat starts spamming incel. Retarded chat feels okay, man. Uh, uh, I mean, there's more than your definition of an incel, right? There's the other one where it's like, hate all the women no matter what, right? And that's what they were saying it too. Not his sexual experiences. 
worked on himself and got treatment for both his mental illness and his sadistic tendencies. And now he's innocent. However, you'd be very, very wrong. <laughs> Nikolai was finally released and almost immediately after being sent back into the free world, he went back to his old ways. In the later months of 1980, he took the lives of three more women. It's so disturbing to know that Nikolai was within the police grasps this entire time. It was so good I had to They had been actively myself. investigating the murders, yet they had no idea he it was happens. responsible. This marked the first time that Nikolai was able to slip out of the hands of the police. And yes, you heard me right. This is the first time. There were others. After his stay at the mental health facility, Nikolai was eventually able to return to society and live a fairly normal life. Even though he had been diagnosed with multiple STDs after living such a frivolous lifestyle, Nikolai continued to host parties at his home, just like old times, and would invite over all sorts of people, some friends, some acquaintances, and sometimes people he barely knew. In this instance, he was hosting a party and invited over several of his close friends and their girlfriends. When he would host these parties, Nikolai would be sure that everyone had something to drink and there was plenty of food available. It seems like he was genuinely loving hosting parties and would prepare large amounts of food and let his guests eat whatever they wanted. However, he would later confess he would feed his victims to his party goers without them knowing. It is unknown how many of his friends became unwitting cannibals. While hosting what is known to be his last ever party, everything was going relatively well. At some point, Nikolai convinced one of the party goers to come with him to a separate room. This would mark the capture of his ninth victim. But unlike his other victims, this one was a male. After the two had vanished into the other room for quite some time, Nikolai's friends came to check on him. When they opened the door, they found that Nikolai had taken the man's life and had begun to dismember the body, just like he had done so many times before. His guests found the decapitated head of one of their friends, as well as his intestines. The partygoers obviously fled from the home, completely shocked and dumbfounded by what they had just seen. At this point, things get a bit strange because, for some unknown reason, Nikolai didn't even bother hiding or even leaving his home. Instead, he continued working on his latest victim until the police showed up. When the cops finally walked in on him, they found him crouched down on his knees, covered in blood. The police were so taken aback by what they had just walked All in right. on him. While they were doing their best to process the situation, Nikolai was able to run off and flee into the nearby mountains. According to the responding officers, he was completely nude when he made a run for it. All he took with him was the machete he had used on the victim. He managed to hide out in the woods of the mountains for several hours and was not found until the following day. He was arrested on December 19, 1980, and once again taken into police custody. Foursome in so isn't just someone who hates women point, for Nikolai a random reason. That's a misogyny. In so are specifically angry from His inexperience with women speed. in their lives. This man, by definition, can't be an incel. Uh huh. Because previously you said that they have no experience with women. Which one is it? Who cares what the definition started is? Started to gain worldwide made up recognition term the fucking as viewers were left in right, awe by his gruesome acts against these innocent people. Definitions. The media had begun to refer to him as metal but fan, we know what we're as he had about metal teeth this. implanted into his mouth as a result of a street fight from his younger days. However, this might have even helped for devouring his victims. He was held in police custody for nearly a full year before he was sent to trial. When he finally right. made his way into the... So, police retarded. Lost shit. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and a comment of what you want to see next.